بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is unit two speaking but before we indulge in our lesson let's open our workbook page 90 just to revise our previous lessons take some exercises exercise H complete the conversation with the words and phrases from the box as you can see here we have a box with some words we'll be filling the gaps with these Words. The first word is a hassle, piece of cake, I guess, whoops, no-brainer, chuck, and lame. So the first one is already done for you, the word whoops. You can see here the word uh, whoops is already crossed for you. So in the beginning of the conversation, Andrea says, whoops, I left my water bottle inside. I'll bring it back. Elizabeth, oh wait, I have bottles of water right here. You can have one of these. Andrea, actually, I try not to drink out of plastic bottles. Elizabeth, really, it seems like such to always have to carry that stainless steel bottle around with you. So again, Elizabeth, really, it seems like such. And then we have the first gap. So which of these words do we choose to fill the first gap? So answer number one is, yes, a hassle. So again, Elizabeth, really, it seems like such a hassle to always have uh, to carry that stainless steel bottle around with you. Andrea, actually it's, and then the second gap here, you're always carrying around with plastic ones. Again, Andrea, it's, you're always carrying around the plastic ones. So. What's the answer number two here? Number two is, that's correct, a piece of cake. Andrea, actually, it's a piece of cake. You're always carrying around the plastic ones. So continuing here, Elizabeth, true, but if I get tired of carrying it, I can always it anyway. I usually recycle them. Again, Elizabeth, true, but if I get tired of carrying it, I can always, and the third gap here, it. Anyway, I usually recycle them. So we have the third gap here. What word do we put here in the third gap? So let's look for the correct answer. And the correct answer is chuck. So I can always chuck it. Anyway, I usually recycle them. Again, Elizabeth, true. But if I get tired of it, if I get tired of carrying it, I can always chuck it. Anyway, I usually recycle them. Andrea, well, that's a good start. But you don't, but don't you think it's to use the energy to recycle plastic bottles when it's so easy to just reuse the same one over and over? Again, Andrea, well, that's a good start. But don't you think it's number four here, to use the energy to recycle plastic bottles when it's so easy to just reuse the same one over and over. So number four is, yes, lame. So again, Andrea, well, that's a good start, but don't you think it's lame to use the energy to recycle plastic bottles when it's so easy to just reuse the same one over and over? Elizabeth, number five here, it still seems like I'm, going, I'm doing something since I at least recycled them most of the time. Again, number five here, Elizabeth. It, uh, it still seems like I'm doing something since I at least recycled them most of the time. So number five is what? Yes, I guess. It means you're almost agreeing with them. I guess. It still seems like I'm doing something since I at least recycle them most of the time. Andrea, anyway, plastic bottles are bad for your health. Elizabeth, really? Andrea, yeah, the chemicals from the plastic can get into the water and cause health problems. Again, the chemicals from the plastic can get into the water and cause health problems. So Andrea is going for the stainless steel bottles instead of the plastic bottles, even if you are recycling them. So he advised you to use the, uh, the uh, stainless steel 
bottles instead of the plastic ones. Elizabeth, hmm, well, in that case, it sounds like, number six here, want to help, want to help me pick out, pick out a stainless steel water bottle. Andrea, sure. Again, Elizabeth, hmm, well, in that case, it sounds like, number six here is, yes, a no-brainer, and it sounds like a no-brainer. Want to help me pick out a stainless steel water bottle? Andrea, sure. The next exercise I is reading. Read the article and answer the questions. So we have an article, a three-part article, actually. The first part here is buying locally grown. Buying locally grown. What do you mean locally grown? Yes, it means the vegetables that are that are grown in your area, locally grown. So let's listen to this article. Eating organic fruits and vegetables is one way to help our planet since it does not involve spraying harmful pesticides and herbicides into the environment. However, there are many people who say that eating organic isn't enough and that it's more important to eat locally grown fruits and vegetables. The organic produce that you find in your grocery store is often shipped halfway around the world. This means that it is both creating air pollution, and that it's a few days old by the time it gets to the store. Locally grown produce is better because it does not contribute to pollution. Also it's the freshest possible, so you get the full amount of its vitamins and nutrients. So we can see here in this uh, article, the writer is encouraging the locally grown, even he's saying that it's better than the organic one that you find in the market, because the organic, it might be coming from half across the world. Uh, it will be supporting the pollution from the airplanes here. And he says here that even the locally grown are more fresh than the organic ones in the supermarket. So going to the next paragraph here, the next article, community supported agriculture. Community supported agriculture, or you can say here CSA. So let's listen here together. One way to get locally grown produce is to become a member of a community supported agriculture, CSA. A CSA is of a group of individual people who promise to support a farm. This way, the farmland becomes the community's farm, with both the farmers and the consumers sharing benefits and risks. Community-supported agriculture began in the early 1960s in Europe and Japan as an answer to concerns about food safety and the urbanization of farmland. Over the last 20 years in the U.S., CSAs have become a popular way for people to buy local, seasonal food directly from a farmer. So we can see here CSA or Community Supported Agriculture is that the people are supporting the farmers by buying the vegetables and fruits directly from their farms. So it's a, it's a community of farmers and consumers. So how a CSA works, this is the last, uh, the last article here, how a CSA works, let's listen here. A farmer offers a certain number of shares to the public. The share is usually made up of a bag of vegetables. People who are interested in becoming members buy a share before the farming season begins. Then, once the season begins, they get a box of seasonal produce each week throughout the farming season, usually about 20 weeks long. This arrangement creates many advantages for the farmers and the consumers. So this is how a CSA uh, works, advantages for farmers and advantages for consumers. So let's read them together here This in this chart here. Advantages for farmers, the first one, they get to spend time selling the food early in the year when they aren't as busy. So the first advantage for the farmers, that they get to spend time selling the food early in the year when they aren't as busy. The second advantage, they get paid early in the season, which helps with the farm's cash flow. So the second advantage that they get paid early, which helps the, the cash flow for the farm. The third one, they have an opportunity to get to know the people who eat the food they grow. So they get the opportunity, they get the chance to meet the people who eat their food. 
Advantages for the consumers. Advantages for the consumers here. The first one, they get to eat the freshest produce possible because they're, e they're, e they're getting it directly from the farm. They get to eat the freshest produce possible. The second advantage for the consumer, they get to learn about new vegetables and new ways of cooking. So they get new vegetables and new ways of cooking. The third one, they get to know the farmer who grows their food and learn more about how food is grown. So they know the farmer who uh, grow their food. The last one, they are contributing to the locally grown movement, thus not creating more pollution by having food shipped. So there is no ship, there is no food shipped, which means there is no pollution uh, from the uh, planes that are getting the food to them. So the first question here, choose one problem with the organic fruits and vegetables is that A, they're grown with pesticides, B, they're often shipped from far away. Again, number one, one problem with organic fruits and vegetables is that a. They're grown with pesticides. B. They're often shipped from far away. So, in the article, what was the problem mentioned about organic food? If you remember, what was the problem from buying an organic food from the uh, supermarket, for example? Is it A or B? Yes, that's correct. B. They're, they're often shipped from far away, which helps p polluting the air. Number two, produce probably means, again, produce probably means fruits and vegetables, farm animals and meat. Again, number two, produce probably means A, fruits and vegetables, B, farm animals and meat. I think this is an easy one. That's correct. It's A, when they say produce, it means they produce fruits and vegetables. Number three, CSAs began in the 1960s in Europe and Japan, B, the US. CSA began in the 1960s where? Is it A, Europe and Japan, or is it B, in the US? So where did it begin? Let's check the correct answer here. That's correct in Europe and Japan. Number four, a share of the farm is, so what is a share of the farm? Is it A, vegetables that you buy at the market every week, B, a bag of vegetables that you buy before the growing season but pick up every week? Again, four, a share of the farm is A, vegetables that you buy at the market every week or is it B, a bag of vegetables that you buy for before the growing season, but pick up every week. So what is a share of the farm? Yes, that's correct. It's B. It's a bag of vegetables that you buy before the growing season. Then you pick up every week. Number five, one benefit of a CSA for both farmers and consumers is that they get to what? A, know each other, B, learn about new vegetables and new ways of cooking. Again, number five, one benefit of CSA for both, focus here on the word both, the farmers and the consumers, is that they get to what? A, that they get to know each other, or B, that they learn new vegetables and new ways of cooking. Focus here that this is advantage for both the farmers and the consumers, both of them. So, yes, this is an easy one, actually, that they get to know each other. So, if you remember our previous lesson, uh, living off the grid, if you remember living off the grid, what does off the grid mean? It means off the power grid, of course, using uh, maybe solar panel or wind farm or growing locally grown food. Then we took the reading. What do you think off the grid mean? What does it mean to live off the grid? of the power grid. This is from our previous lesson, the reading lesson. If you remember, as challenging as it may be to live off the grid, most of griders feel that the benefits far overweight the difficulties. So some people who are living off the grid, even though they face difficulties, but they think that the benefits outweighs the difficulties. 
So also we took previously the vocabulary practice, the word self, the word self. Self-reliance means doing things without help from other people. Self-sufficient, producing or making everything you need without help from others. Self means a person's own nature or characteristics. It's also used in the reflexive pronouns, for example, myself or yourself. Then we took some examples, self-esteem, self-defense, self-thought, and self-control. So today's objectives to list uh, of information in a chart. To list information in a chart. This is the speaking for lesson today. Work in groups, discuss how a family can live off a grid in your country and use the chart to make notes. Compare and discuss your ideas in class. So you have to discuss your ideas with your colleagues. We have a chart here, public utility, number one, local electricity supply, number two, cooking and uh, heating gas, number three, local water supply. And we have four columns here, which is the easiest or the hardest to do without? What is an alternative in your home? What is the most challenging aspect of not having it? Or number four here, does this appeal to you or not? Why or why not? Let's take the first one, for example, which is the easiest or hardest to do without? To, uh, without local electricity supply, cooking and heating gas or local water supply. Of course, this is all of this answer is up to you, your own opinion, your own answer. For example, for me, it's not easy not having electricity. It's not easy not having electricity. You have to have electricity, especially if you live in a city. About the cooking and heating gas, not having gas is the easiest. I think not having gas is the easiest of the three. And the uh, hardest one is not having a local water supply. Not having water is the hardest. What is the alternative in your home? Not having electricity supply. Maybe a fuel motor generator. If you have a generator that you can fuel it up, you can have electricity or maybe solar panels that you have in your house. Cooking and heating gas, what's the alternative? That's correct. Maybe firewood, you can cook with firewood instead of the gas. Local water supply, do you have an alternative in your house for the local water supply, the water that comes from the faucet? Do you have an alternative in your house for me, I don't have any alternative. Maybe you have your own well in your farm, but uh, for me, I don't have any alternative for the local water supply. What is the most challenging aspect of not having it? The local electricity supply providing the alternative. There's no, alter it's hard to provide an alternative for the local electricity uh, supply. Uh, from the solar panels or the fuel generator, the, uh, the motor generator. Cooking and heating gas, what's the most challenging aspect of not having it? Getting the wood, maybe it's hard uh, sometimes to get the wood to cook or maybe ha a place to cook using the wood in our houses. The local water supply, what is the most challenging aspect of not having it? What is the most challenging in, in not having a water supply? Everything. Everything is hard when you don't have a locally water supply. As I said before, unless you have your own will, maybe in your own farm. Does it appeal to you or not? Why or why not? Does this again appeal to you or not? Why or why not? Does it appeal to you, the local electricity supply? Yes, of course, I enjoy electricity in my house, turn on the TV to uh, use the heater in cold days, or maybe the AC in hot days. Cooking and heating gas, does it appeal to you? Of course, we use gas for cooking, maybe not heating, we use it a lot for cooking. Local water supply, does this appeal to you? Of course. We can't, uh, actually we can't live in our houses without uh, using the locally water supply to take showers and to, uh, to, to perform ablution before going to pray. So, so it's extremely important to have a locally water supply. So compare and discuss your ideas in the class. So once you fill this chart, discuss your ideas, your opinions with your friend and then compare your ideas. 
Here's a fun fact. In 2006, it was estimated that there were 180,000 people in the U.S. living off the grid. In 2006, 180,000 living off the grid. At that time, the number was growing by 33% a year. Worldwide, there are about 1.7 billion people who live off the grid. This is a large number, actually. Of course, many of these were never on the grid in the first place. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, insha'Allah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu ala ala anta astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.